this first poem that I want to share with you, I started it out as a Valentine's poem to my mother, and then it turned into a horse poem. So it's kind of a horse mother Valentine's poem. It's called The Other Mother. <clears throat> I guess that something broke inside her the night she lost her newborn foal. She wouldn't even let us in the pen. She stood over him for two days straight. She wouldn't eat or drink. She nuzzled, nudged, and licked all over him. We finally got a rope around him and we pulled his body out. She charged the gate and put up quite a fight. It broke my heart to hear her from the kitchen window in the house as she whinnied loud and long into the night. From that time on, her soul was wounded and I watched her as she turned into a creature full of anger and of hate. She'd bare her teeth and try to run me down when it came time to feed as my three-year-old son watched outside the gate. I decided that I'd sell her the next time I went to town. She was a danger and I didn't want her near. I talked to my young boy about never going in her pen. I thought I'd made things pretty plain and clear. But she seemed to fascinate him in a strange and touching way. He'd stand outside her fence for hours on end. I'd hear him telling nonsense stories and singing songs that he'd made up, just like he'd do if he was with a friend. One day I got the feeling as I was hanging laundry out that something wasn't just exactly right. I walked around the corner of the house and toward the barn. What I saw completely filled me full of fright. My son had opened up her gate, a flake of hay held in his hands. With the ears laid back, the mare pawed up the dirt. I knew there was no way that I could reach my boy in time. In seconds, he'd be killed or badly hurt. I reached the fence about the time she whirled and charged at him. I saw her great hooves flash as they came down. A wailing cry escaped from me that only mothers make. An awful, empty, broken, frightened sound. I'd like to think she recognized another mother's grief, that somehow she sensed another kindred soul. Perhaps with her intelligence, she knew instinctively that that little one was my own helpless foal. She pulled herself up short within a hair's breadth width of him. Her muscles bunched and quivered with a strain. She stood a moment breathing hard, her eyes fixed on my son. Then with a gentleness I can't explain, she sniffed his face and neck and blew her warm breath in his ear. He wiggled and he giggled with pure joy. With the manners of a gracious queen, she ate with small, neat bites, the alfalfa hay held out by my small boy. As humans, we are often small and shallow in our thoughts about animals and what we think they feel. We believe that only two-legged species know about true love, that four-legged creatures can't know what is real. But in that mare, I saw a simple, heartfelt longing for her babe, a hurt and pain as real as mine would be if the circumstances had been changed on that one fateful day and my son had been taken away from me. With glee, he grabbed her round her legs and hugged her hard and tight. She nudged him softly with her velvet nose. And I left my child to comfort that other mother in her loss as I slowly headed back to hang the clothes. That night when it was time for bed, I told my little boy, as he lay so sweet and warm under the cover, that she could have really hurt him. But he whispered in my ear, I wasn't scared because she was a mother. That mare is now the best friend that my young son has in life. They're together each and every single day. She watches over him as if he were her flesh and blood, and I believe she thinks of him that very way. I've thought almost each day now about the miracle I saw, and I'm convinced that neither here nor up above there will ever be a medicine or discovery that is made that can heal a broken heart like simple love.